ASMR. Today we're going to be doing a long overdue comic book haul. So we're just going to get right into it. So first off, I have a random one. I don't know what this was doing in my pull box, but it's a cool looking book regardless. This is Wolverine number 23. And it's got Deadpool in it as well. And it's got one of the Gooberts doing the art, so I can't imagine that it's going to be too terrible of a book. Both of the Gooberts, Adam and Andy, are like pros, so even though this was a random book in my box, it's definitely worth looking at. And honestly, Wolverine is one of those books that I probably should be reading. It looks like it's quality enough, you know. You have Benjamin Percy's writing, and then Adam Cooper is doing the art. Or the pencil work, rather. But yeah, you can never go wrong with any of the Coopers. Yeah, so sorry that this video was more or less late, late on two fronts. I should have done this last week, um, but last week uh, we were celebrating our wedding anniversary, 16 years, and then it was my oldest son's birthday, and then we had Pokemon Go Fest on top of that, so there was like literally no time last weekend. Next we got the Armageddon game number one. This is like the current big Eternals event book. The ongoing still coming out, but this is like a, just a interweaved uh, big event story that links with the ongoing monthly. But yeah, and then... So this is technically what I bought the previous weekend, but I still hadn't had a chance to look at it. This is cool here. It's got, you know, Shredder here, and it's got his cape with all this history of illustrations in there. Really cool. But, yeah, so this is all the stuff I bought last week, but I had no time. And then this week, technically, um, at the beginning of the week, I'm going to be celebrating my birthday. So this is technically a birthday haul, even though it's not. So, but yeah, this is one of those important Turtles books here. If you're following the series and stuff like that, this is kind of a must follow. Uh, big pieces here. It's got um, Tom Waltz is back on the story. He hasn't worked on it in a while. He was one of the big key people for the IDW book. And of course, just lots of huge elements coming to fruition. A lot of the stuff Rat King has been trying to orchestrate uh, is coming to fruition now. So very important if you're following the uh, Ninja Turtles. Next we got Fortnite Marvel Zero War number two. This is the standard Little Francis U cover. And if you get one of the other covers, you still get an image of this basic standard cover inside. I've got a few of the others on pull at my other shop. So when I get those, I'll show them off as well. But yeah, this is just kind of a fun little, you know, one-off series here. That's just fun if you're into Fortnite and stuff, and it includes DLC codes in it. And the big thing is it's only the first printings of the Marvel comics have the codes. So DC didn't do that, but Marvel is, so they're trying to add an extra element of value and collectability to their issues, which is pretty awesome if you gotta ask me. But yeah, nothing too crazy as far as art-wise or anything, but just fun, fast-paced action. 
and just fun seeing, you know, the Fortnite original characters interacting with the Marvel characters, so. But yeah, and then I tried to record earlier today when someone was actually using a bunch of power tools and stuff like that, so I had to wait until night time to do this. So this is Batman Urban Legends number 17. This is the variant cover here. So they wrapped up all the previous story arcs, which is why I hadn't been showing it off for the past few hauls. Because I wasn't a fan of those stories. So it looks like this is all kind of like one shot self-contained because I don't see any part one of here. It's just full on brand new stories, none of them are carried over from the previous, so it'll be kind of fun to see what happens, it looks like this first story involves Batman and the Flash, each story might involve a different Justice League member, I'm not sure, I haven't looked at it yet, so, I did get caught up on my other books I had to read, so all I have is this stack here, which is funny because then I gotta buy a brand new one coming up this Friday. So. But yeah, I'm not gonna argue if you wanna give me a little fun birthday cash or whatever. I do have my PayPal link below. Or you could even support me by um, checking out my eBay store. I've got a few books basically. Uh, what I'm doing is anything I'm not really too concerned with keeping. Uh, just for saving space, I'm going to list on eBay. More or less, I try to do lots with everything at like half cover price. And then, you know, shipping to wherever. And I put everything in Gemini Mail or so. If you want to support that way, you can as well. So, I've got two concerts I'm going to here this week too. I've got to see Train, hopefully with my wife, if she can get all of her scheduling stuff organized and then I'm seeing the chili peppers on Wednesday so we'll see how all that goes but it would be nice if I could get a t-shirt or something right now I've got no funds I was lucky enough to secure my tickets when I did but now I've got no funds for my birthday or for the concerts I get paid like two days after all that so kind of annoying so yeah, this story, it looks like it involves Aquaman. This is another short story in here. And another one here, Starcraft. I don't know what that one's about. Looks like it's got some pretty decent art there. Ah, maybe Hawkman. Interesting. He's certainly not one I see him utilize a whole lot. Although I remember his last standalone series they did was supposed to be really good. Ah, oh, looks like the Black Adam's in here too, so. Then we have King Spawn number 12. Which, honestly, I think this is the most important Spawn book out right now. A lot of crazy things happening in this book. Art's good, story's good. There's a lot um, of just kind of fan service and pushing along elements that you've kind of always wished you'd see happen, happen. A big one when they started out, they brought back old uh, Billy Kincaid, the ice cream serial killer. So that was a huge thing. And then actually formally getting Spawn on the throne in a spot of leadership and stuff like that is a big push. And then all the weird stuff, the extremist group, who is more or less like twisting Old Testament scripture to 
justify slaughtering. So just kind of all sorts of really interesting things. miniseries. This is number four of four. Very nice Americana piece here. With the flag. And yeah, this has been enjoyable. I still need to watch this movie with my kids. They haven't seen it yet. I've talked about it a lot and you know, they've been seeing me get a lot of this recent merch that's come out because of the celebration. I think it's up on 40 years now, they said. Which, that's crazy. I'm going to be turning 37 here soon, so. It's just strange to think about all that, so. But yeah, you can see this is just very bright. And, you know, it's fun to look at. It's well drawn. And I've been enjoying this series. I hope to do more with the Rocketeer. We'll see, you know. But it is nice when they pull them back out every now and then. And then not only that, here is the standard A cover. And my shop has been so nice that they've been holding all the Virgin variant covers for me too. So I've got the full set of these. So all the standard cover A trade dresses are gonna be listed on eBay together, all half cover price, plus shipping in the Gemini mailer. So if you're interested in that, keep your eyes peeled for that. Then we have Alien. This says, oh, this is the annual number one. I was wondering why it said number one. I know they kind of wrapped the arc they were on in the ongoing. But yeah, this series has been good too. Uh, like I said, I, have, I didn't really grow up reading the Alien, the Dark Horse stuff or anything like that. But just from uh, reading the Marvel stuff, I've really enjoyed it. The art's been quality, the story's been quality. So, if you're interested in any of Alien at all, I would recommend it for sure. And then I'll jump ahead a little later here. I saw some Xenomorph action here. Right here, yeah. So yeah, just really great stuff. number five which if you'll remember in the previous one Batman and Superman had fused together people have been comparing it to you know like the Dragon Ball Z fusions and stuff like that so I don't remember them splitting back up though but yeah they're fighting some, one of those like ancient demon sort of villains and they needed to combine themselves in order to fight him. This is their threat right here. And he like poisoned Superman's blood and stuff and made him go unstable. And then there have been just like a lot of fun interactions between Supergirl and Tim Drake and stuff like that as well. So yeah, it looks like they already split back into each other. I don't remember them destabilizing. Next we have Catwoman 45. And this is one that keeps showing up in my box. I'm not complaining about it. Mainly because we keep getting these really nice Jenny Frisson covers here. She's close to wrapping her run, though. This might even be the last one she does. I know she's got a few less. I follow her on Instagram, so I know recently she posted her last one, but I couldn't remember if 
it was this or not. But I like how this almost has that purpley color of the 90s one, but it's, you know, the current design. But I know it's just the lighting making it look a, a little bit nostalgic. But, but yeah, the recent thing is they were they had Tiger Claw show up on show up in here and stuff. So that was fun. They really didn't have kind of a real interaction, though. She was able to talk some sense into her and avoid a really serious situation. She's like, hey, do you know anything about the person who sent you? And just kind of made her aware of what a creep Black Mask is, which Selena had destroyed one of Black Mask's masks. So he's super ticked about that. I think he's wearing like makeshift masks and stuff now. So that's been kind of fun. But yeah, it's been enjoyable. It's not really something like I have to collect or read, but you know, it keeps showing up on my box. So I'm like, well, I might as well continue. And who doesn't love Catwoman, right? with Tim Drake there. Next we have Dark Crisis Young Justice number two. Really wish we could get another Todd Knock cover, but at least we were able to get one. Let me trace a little bit here of this image. Absolutely loved Young Justice when I was a teenager. And this has all the little nods about it here. Them fighting the Mighty Endowed. Is either Mighty Endowed or Well Endowed? I forget. Uh, Mighty Endowed, yeah. He was just kind of a throwaway villain in the first issue. Who basically like, hypnotizes you with her chest. And she just like falls over because her breasts are too huge and that's always been the, the shtick for her so yeah it's you know sophomore toilet humor but you know <laughs> it is what it is that's what they were catering to at the time when the book came out in the 90s so there's a bit of them like coming back to that and giving a bit of that storytelling a black eye which is a bummer, you know, because I look fondly on it. It's definitely dated to look at things like that. But yeah, at the time it was amusing, you know. And so like what's happened here is basically I think the boys are all in their regular time period, but then like um, Wonder Girl and stuff like that, they um, have been transported to that time period and just kind of seeing things through a different set of eyes trying to figure out why everything is like it is so yeah it's fun to just see all the guys back together here I've got you know the trades because I've had to rebuy the books and stuff but the trades still haven't collected the last 10 or so issues. So hopefully they'll jump on that soon. Next we have Nightwing number 94. It's a little bit of a steamy cover here. Looks like they're gonna do the deed in their uh, superhero costumes there, so. And yeah, this is just another a solid book for DC. It's it's nice to look at. It's well written. It's interesting. So yeah, if you like Dick Grayson at all, from any point in his supering here heroing career, you'll probably enjoy it. Look at that. Just that's just so fun to look at. I love it. It's got like a little glider suit on there. colors are nice and bright. They pop really well. And 
just a lot of good motion and lots of movement being conveyed very well on these panels. I showed you that one a while back ago. Where it was like showing him like running through the panels and stuff, just super cool. Next we have Gunslinger number 10. And this is a good book. I'm really trying to figure out where it fits in on the story timeline though. From what I can tell it looks like he's at odds with all the Al Simmons and I'm not really sure why based upon the current storyline. To my understanding, they get along fine in the regular ongoing Spawn Monthly, so I'm not sure what their problem is in particular in this series. But it's one of those things, you know, if you're literally trying to juggle, I think it's four different series now for Spawn. Stuff kind of gets a little grayed out on occasion especially since some elements have always gotten kind of muddy within the spawn lore, you know. But, yeah, I enjoy it just because it's not like anything else I read. You know, it's really dark and just kind of more brutal than your standard superhero stuff, which, you know, that's why Todd put it together and you wanted to make comics that the big two... Uh, would never ever humor making so So next I got a couple cool books that showed up out of nowhere when I came back from vacation here so uh, These were sent to me by the writer here So this first one is actually super limited. There were only 50 of them made Gregory sent these to me and it's signed to see and this one was oh even fewer 25 copies made so yeah this is just a nice black and white cover I guess you could color it or whatever you wanted to do but yeah this is the secret life of crows special edition one and two collected and this was a really cool story as Raven it was inspired by some other literary work pertaining to crows and stuff, I believe. Because towards the back there's looks like an excerpt of something. But the story is interesting. It's kind of like there's an entity that spawns at nighttime, kind of like this female raven goddess. And she just feels sad and alone. Literally nothing else like her. And then there's a transition that happens. Basically the rising and the setting of the sun and all this stuff triggers. So as she is transforming back into a crow here, then in the day we have another bird here that turns into this other godlike creature who has the same feelings, just kind of always being sad and alone. And they manage to like kept to catch a glimpse of each other in transition. And so they're now aware of each other, even though they cannot interact based upon the transition of the times here, but it's just so beautifully done. Just kind of the sorrow and the, the longing and all this sort of stuff. I really, really was compelled by this. And it's beautifully drawn. Really nice, really well done. And yeah, I have no idea why uh, Raven sent this to me other than it just showed up. Uh, there's another creator I support. I believe he just passed on my info to him. But yeah, if you can find this, by all means, pick it up. This is just a really cool story. It's The Secret Life of Crows. It's by Raven Gray. 
Gregory, and there's more stuff by him too, I'm sure, and he sent me an additional book as well. This is also kind of, well, this is an older book. And this is a special version too, so this is the gift number one director's cut. Once again, uh, signed in the corner here. And what I noticed here is we have Mr. Tyler Kirkham did the art in this. And this is a much earlier Tyler than the one I was introduced, I believe, just recently, more or less. During DC, he did a small stint on Superman where he, like, met up with um, Deathstroke, if I remember correctly. But yeah, this is early Tyler Kirkham here. And the story is from 2005, I believe, is what I'm reading from there. But yeah, once again, just kind of an interesting story. Um, the start of something much bigger and grander than I could get the scope of from a single issue. But I certainly will go back and hunt it down and try to find more. But yeah, once again, this is fun to look at. You know, I love this image in particular here. Him plunging into the water there, the, the bubbles and everything. And although this is, this is great art, you can definitely tell um, Tyler has grown as an illustrator as well. So it's fun to see this early stuff too. And I think this is like kind of a, a pull out image here which is what was used for the cover as well. So you can go to thegift.com, learn more, I suppose. And yeah, just kind of another origin story type of thing. And then there's this fun little backup about how to break into the industry, which is kind of like, hey, be prepared for the worst. Because as you're trying to work on your craft, a lot of bad stuff's going to keep popping up to get you to sidetrack and derail from creating. But you got to push through it. And every step of the way, even towards the end when you're trying to get it formally into stores and stuff like that. So really nice message there from Raven. So very cool. I'm super glad. And this is him here. This is Raven. So I'm really glad he sent this to me. It was a total surprise. Uh, no strings attached to my understanding, but you know what I do. This is my channel, so I can't help but show off cool things like this. And there's a couple little inserts here. So there's like this little postcard here. It's on like nicer paper stock too. That's got a nice texture on it. I could probably trace a little bit of that, honestly. Let's go from here. Not too precise, but just to kind of get the job done there for you. But really nice. support his stuff. There's a little postcard here. There's a book called Widow's Web number four. It looks like this is a more recent ad. Go to the Raven Gregory at Gmail for orders and info. And there's probably a dot com on here too, I would imagine somewhere. Now I guess it's just email inquiry and I'm sure you could also Google it and stuff like that. So, but we see some of the different covers and things like that here. Uh, some more risque versions. Same on the other side, too. There's a few of them. So, really nice. So, hit up Raven. Email him if you're interested. Seems interesting, so check him out. Thank you so much, Raven. So the next couple things I've got, these are um, 
just some other things I picked up. One of them I just got in uh, yesterday. So I got my toaster coasters from GB. Now GB, she is probably one of the biggest ASMRists on YouTube. She's been doing this for, I think, as long as me. Maybe even a year longer, possibly. But she is just incredibly driven. Very successful. She's super creative. She has a passion for creating. Um, and her stuff isn't all phoned in. She does a lot of interesting concepts and characters and ideas. So yeah, this is a product that she just made that she has been using. We've referred to it as, as the toaster coaster for years. And it's just a cork board like this. Hers look like this and they're kind of more, I guess they fall apart more, but these are uh, made better than that. And then they have her channels logo here. So it's just a four count of these nice little coasters because that's typically what you get in a set, you know, so, and she just taps on these for her channel sometimes, a good one too, you can kind of get a nice drag out of it, so, but yeah, she just got to do one of these sort of It's just some a famous prop that she uses. She is known for it. So she thought it'd be cool to make merch of it. And this was limited. You can't go on her site and get it anymore. And she's just going to kind of release merch in waves. So she did this in a shirt. I did not order the shirt at the time. I ordered her G Fuel Shaker a while back too. And I've got her U2 she made. So... I've got quite a few GB products, but yeah, she's great. I support her. I highly recommend her. Uh, she's big into like anime and manga as well, so there might be a thread there if you're interested. Sometimes she'll do like role plays and dress up as characters and stuff. In her secondary channel, she's done some like anime club type stuff where she's reviewed certain shows and stuff so yeah she's just cool but yeah and the next thing i'm not sure if i can get it on frame or not i was finally able to get my own turtle van yeah no that's not gonna fit in frame there at all but i never had one as a kid so i finally have this one they reissued these and it's got the original packaging here. I'm so sorry I can't get all this in frame, but I'm sure if you know, you know on this. There's a picture of it. But yeah, they reissued the van as well as the blimp that's still waiting at the shop for me. It was kind of higher priced. I think they were around 60 Which, lo and behold, to me, after I had already locked in my pre-orders at my shop, uh, you can find them on Amazon right now for about half that. So if you don't have a local shop to support or, you know, if you haven't already pre-ordered one of those accessories yourself, you can go on Amazon and get them for around $35 to $40 for the blimp as well as the van. So just uh, really cool. So, yeah. That's going to do it for today. Sorry, it's kind of a shorter video, but the good news is there will be a, um, a haul coming up the next Saturday as well, um, since my week's got thrown off here. But uh, yeah, let me know what you want to see. Like, comment, subscribe. Help us push closer to that 2,500 subscriber giveaway of all those cool books that I uh, got signed for you all. And... Uh, as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks.